All right, well, I'm gonna introduce myself. So we will start. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome. For those of you whom I've not yet met, I'm Pat Perizzini, Director of Alumni Engagement, Regional Chapter Development for Fairfield University, and I am so thrilled to be able to bring this event to you via Zoom. In my position here in the university, I have the pleasure of working with alumni from across the country, coordinating with chapter leaders and volunteers to host events that keep alumni and parents connected to and engaged with Fairfield. We have nine regional chapters from Boston to Washington DC alphabetically and from Boston to San Francisco geographically. A little bit of housekeeping first. Um, please make sure your audio capabilities are turned off. Video is fine, we always like to see faces. Um, we have a lot of folks on this event this evening, which is outstanding, and we welcome your questions. You have time at the end of the presentation for Q&A. You can use the chat function on Zoom to ask your questions anytime during the presentation, and I will monitor the chat and relay those questions to our presenter. So now on to the main event. This presentation was the idea of the Washington, D.C. alumni chapter, and specifically chapter leader Tom Fitlow class of 2009, an economics and international studies double major, and a former student of our presenter. So I am passing the baton to Tom to introduce our special guest instructor. Tom, take it away. Thanks, Pat. Um, <clears throat> appreciate everyone being here. I, uh, I, I contacted Pat about a month ago and said, I think we need an update from, from Dr. Lane. So uh, this would kind of got this going. So if for those of you who don't know, Dr. Lane is an associate professor of economics and a mentor in the Ignatian Residential College at Fairfield. He has been advisor to Fairfield University's Federal Reserve College Ch Challenge team for more than 15 years. He was awarded one of two 2019 Magis Medals by the National Jesuit Honor Society, Alpha Sigma Nu. This highly competitive honor, rarely awarded to a fair faculty member, is presented annually to two Alpha Sigma Nu members who exemplify the Honor Society's core values, scholarship, loyalty, and service in their work to better the world. Dr. Lane has also received other honors and awards, including Teacher of the Year from Alpha Sigma Nu, Advisor of the Year from PUSA, and the Father Thomas McGrath Society of Jesus Faculty Award from the National School of Banking. He is, and last but not least, he is a proud grandfather of future stags, Shannon, Colin, Molly, and Max. So without further ado, Dr. Lane. Thomas, that was extremely kind and gentle. Um, you could have said a lot of things that were a little more direct, but that was wonderful. You were very kind. A uh, couple things. I'm going to talk at a relatively, well, as some of you know, and I have to be polite, I am only going to ask questions of the people I already know. So it's not that I'm trying to neglect you, but if I don't, haven't had you in class, I don't think it's fair to harass you. Um, so Ms. Uh, Hurley Harrington, excuse me, uh, I, you, you, you have to know I was told by Thomas to start at the bottom of the list, but that doesn't mean I'm going to pay any attention to him. What I'd like to do is talk for a little bit about what's been going on, compare what's been going on to what happened during the Great Recession that some of you had the misfortune of having me in class for, that we sort of made it up as we went along, and, and then talk a little bit about the current chaos. So I'm going to sort of talk about a little bit of the differences and a little bit of what's going on. Not going to spend too much time on policy because I've got some. Uh, Pat, I'm assuming these people will have access to these slides if they have nothing else in their life to do. Uh, <laughs> but clearly make them available. I have no copyright or give a dang about it. Perfect. Thank what you. I'd really like to focus on is for several of you who have been at the Fed Challenge and how that has been a really different story. Um, the last crew that was live was the class of, of uh, 2019. And, and so, I mean, 2020. Uh, and, and so 2021 was a whole different year and I'll talk a lot, a little bit about that. It was a funky experience to say the least. All right, so most of you know the Great Recession. Some of you have had the pleasure of being in, in, at Fairfield when it happened. And this is when Phil Lane would read the Wall Street Journal and everything else he could before he showed up in class because he had to learn a whole bunch of new things. And as you know, Sarah, housing prices never fall. That's a bunch of malarkey too. But the housing market was one of the big players, plus the financial sector. But what gets lost, and most of you know, if you had money and junk with me, is it wasn't our 
normal banks that did all the chaos. It was the non-banks or the non-depositories. And obviously our agencies uh, did some funky stuff. And we, you know, I've got a whole history of that if you want to read it. The housing bubble definitely happened. And we have some, some had the whole subprime challenge. Some of that's still going on now. There's a real question I'll lay out for you later in the financial fragility stuff. One of the places is the subprime uh, used car market. There's some real funky stuff going on there. Um, Mr. Mulligan, if you're on the call, I'll be picking on you later to help me with that, just, just to let you know it's coming. On the insurance side, Mr. Smith, I'll be expecting Murdo to help us on that. Uh, Joe, I expect you to answer everything, so don't worry about it. Oh, and by the way, Mr. Seabrook, should you be here, I believe you may be the veteran on the call. Uh, just for the record, I know I'm older than everybody else on this call, so uh, I probably have forgotten more than just a few so far anyway. We're in a low interest rate environment now. We were in it before the Great Recession. We've got some stuff to talk about that. Obviously, some of you know what I think about Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke was one special guy. Did a great job. Uh, fiscal policy sort of dealt with the challenges. It's a very interesting time. I'll talk a lot more about it as we go along. Now, here's your assignment. Now, if my list is correct, and I stand corrected on everything, as some of you know. So it would seem, Thomas, that I'm going to have to go to Ms. Well, I, her name is Tierney now, but it used to be Matt. Michelle, are you with us? Okay, we'll move right along. Yeah, think about me doing this for teaching class. It's a bloody hell. All right, so Joe, uh, I'm going to go to Murdo Smith. Murdo, we got you? Yep, I'm right here. Oh, good to see you, my friend. Life is good, I hope. It is. All right, wicked awesome. So you're, you're in class now. You know, this is lame. you got to deal with this crazy guy. So we got our toolbox. So what the Haverhill CD? And don't tell me it's what I put in my computer. Oh, gosh. I... God, I'm going to go back and change grace. Call the registrar right now. Let's get her done. All right? You should. I, no, no, no. You were wicked awesome. Don't, don't put yourself down. There's enough other people to do it for you. It's consumer durables, okay? How did that do during the pandemic? Did everybody run out and buy cars? No, that's automobiles, by the way, in case you didn't know what I said. Murdo, I'm talking to you. Oh, I'm still on the, I'm, I didn't realize you're, that you're on the hot spot till I get an answer, please, my friend. Come on. Uh, yes, people did. They ran out. And, so in April, people went out and bought cars during the pandemic? Yep. Really? Did they go to restaurants? No. Okay. So we had consumer savings, consumer spending dropped kind of precipitously. And obviously, state and local governments had no challenges at all, did they? They had lots of challenges. Yeah. So did that cause a lot more expenditures? Absolutely. Oh, okay. So I have a question. Could you explain to this casual observer what stagflation is? Do You do remember, Murdo, that there are three options when I ask you a question. Say something, pass to someone or else, or ask for a medical exemption. You should have remembered the rules of engagement, sir. Uh, stagflation, stagnant inflation, I guess. It, it, if Is that a simple or, Stags or, up? Or? So is that a simultaneous rise in inflation and unemployment? Yes. Okay. So do we have that right now? No. Okay. Like I, what do we got? We have rising inflation and right now relatively steady unemployment. Well, you think 5.8 is steady compared to where it was? Pre-pandemic? -pre Pre-pandemic or at the peak of the pandemic? Right there. Right there. How 17.6 hit you? That's brutal. I mean, that's what happened it's after spring break, right? All right, we had a slight economy. It kind of was not too hot, as we might say. All right? Kind of a problem. All right, so this is sort of what we saw, Murdo. We had a little rise in unemployment. All right, we had to actually redo the graph. It went up so high. Fortunately, it's come back down to 5.8. Now, that's the red line. That's, that should, that, that, hopefully, that's going to be like my EKG running nice and normal now. See, back before. I like it there. Okay? And we had a little drop in GDP. You may have noticed. Kind of fell off the chart. So, Murdo, if you don't mind, I'm going to go see if uh, Mr. Sheridan's with us. Is that all right? Go for it. I don't want you to feel neglected. I don't want you to feel neglected. Or should I just go to the professor?
Murdo, it's up to you. Should I go bother Joe or should I bother um, Paul uh, Sheridan? Go, go bother Joe. Uh, do you know you do you know Joe? He's a really nice guy. I don't think I do. Oh, he's a, he's a former Fed challenger, by the way. So that's that's why we pick on him. So Joe, how you doing? I'm not doing too bad. Are you in Arkansas? Uh, no, right now I'm actually in Connecticut visiting some family. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Good for you, Joe. Yeah. All yeah, right. Absolutely. All right. So that, so you and I, we, 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 you know, we can play a little tag team here. Sarah, don't worry. I'm getting to you. All right. I never forget the people from Massachusetts. All right. Don't shake your head. You're wicked awesome. Okay. Anybody who deals with hockey players is wicked, wicked awesome. So we had a little slight downturn in GDP. Now, here's what the Fed did. Now, Joe, I gotta, I, you got to explain this to me. What the Havel is this blue line? I mean, I know what the blue line is in hockey. Uh, I'm sorry, Sarah, that the Bruins lost, by the way. I was very sad. All right. I, I, I'm going to hear it from Professor Lee, by the way, because she's an Islander fan. She actually has Islander junk in her office at the Dolan School of Business. All right. So, Joe, this is the Fed. Took out the toolbox, right? Yep. Fed Pretty funds much. rate. Toom. All right. And if you actually calculate it, adjusting for inflation, it's negative. So... Not a great, great shakes. Uh, by, uh, by the way, John, I'm going to leave you for a minute. I got to go talk to John Seabrook if he's here. John, are you with us? Yeah, yeah I'm here, Phil. I'm ready. I'm at, I'm at the altar. I'm ready. You're at the altar? Wait a minute. Do you have the boss with you? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm hiding. Okay, so we have the smart one and then we have John. Exactly. So we have the but, smart one and we have Phil, okay? I understand the place, you know, John. Some things don't change. So, so, John, I think you might be the least. The, oh, no, you're not, Kathleen. <laughs> All right. See, the, 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 these are two. I think they're the class of like 95 or something like that. Oh, add about, subtract about 12. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to be nice herself. All right. Trying to be nice. But as you know, the Federal Reserve took out the toolbox. And I have to say, I, I, as much as Powell is an interesting guy, I think the interesting thing about Powell is he's not an economist, but he sure does think like one. And, and that's pretty good. So he took out the toolbox and said, let's let's not repeat what happened in the last recession. And I think they did a pretty good job there. Now, this is the one that's in the background that I'm kind of worried about going forward. And that's oil. And oil prices are up. Again, we got spoiled at the bottom of this uh, recession because, as you know, demand fell off the scale. Uh, just uh, just for the record, for those of you who don't know, I live in Salisbury, Massachusetts, which is the last town in Massachusetts before the New Hampshire border. So I would come down to Fairfield on Sunday night, stay at my cousin's house in, in Westport, and then play school on Monday, uh, drive home, come back Wednesday night, play school on Thursday, stay over Friday, and go, go to a rotary meeting, and then come home. So my car was used to having a lot of mileage. But during the pandemic, I, I had a little reduction in the amount of mileage I had. As a matter of fact, uh, almost zero. So uh, other than having to move it for uh, shoveling and snow blowing, it really didn't go anywhere. So that's clearly why the, a lot of the oil demand fell like a rock. And, and, you know, that's kind of a problem. Now, here's the conundrum. And this is why uh, jo John and Kathleen are going to help me, because they're, they're in the, they were in the housing market not too long ago. And as you know, the housing prices have continued to rise. Now, John, I, I know as a very astute, well, I should, Kathleen can get back here to help you if you need it. Um, don't worry, Kathleen, you can get even later and I know you will. So here's my question. Why in heaven's name of housing prices gone through the roof? Now, John, you got to talk, you know, that's part of the thing. You gotta hard, you. hard assets, hard assets will do well during inflation. Okay, so John, I need Kathleen to explain the five L's of housing. What? <laughs> what? He, that's on first. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Who's on second? I don't know who's on third. Okay, let's go. Leverage. I don't know. Oh, come on, John. You you, you took money and junk with, with Joan. You should all be review, you know? Oh, by the way, most of the folks in the department are doing well. I got to talk to Ed Deke two weeks ago. He's doing great. Uh, I, last report, Larry Miners is doing fine, too. He's out in North Carolina somewhere, up in the hills somewhere. 
Uh, the last report on Robert Aloysius Kelly, he's doing fine. Uh, J Bus, we never hear from. He's out looking at birds somewhere. All right, but everybody else is doing okay. All the young bucks. See, I'm the old guy now. So all the young bucks are doing really well. We got a great crew, by the way. They they tolerate me. We'll have more to say about that later. So Kathleen, for your edification, it's lending, lots, labor, local regulation, and lumber. Those are the now the five L's. Wow of housing. And I got to learn that last year because I couldn't figure out why in heaven's name lumber prices were going through the roof. And I would have asked Joe because down in Arkansas, the price at the source of the lumber is relatively low, but the problem is milling it is a challenge. So clearly, oh, by the way, and you know, John, as well as everybody else, all those people who used to live in New York during the pandemic moved out and they all came somewhere uh, and they've clearly put an excess demand on housing prices. Sarah would know that from Massachusetts. They all moved out of Boston and they've driven the suburbs crazy. I don't know, Tom, how bad it's been in D.C., but it's, I don't know, Joe, you haven't had a, have you had a flight to Arkansas? I don't know, but clearly it's happened up here. They're all moving around. It's been interesting to watch. All right. So we had a little drop in, a little, a little drop in employment. Some big sectors, and most of you know this, the leisure sector got whacked, retail sales, education, kind of interesting. Uh, GDP, big deal. Now, this is sort of what happened initially, but I'd like to gear it up a little bit just so I can have a conversation. Mr. Romano, are you with us? Okay, I didn't get Francis. All right. So this is some stuff that actually you can go to the web and get this. This is from the Cary School of Public Policy at the University of New Hampshire. And it, Joe, it's an interactive thing, easy to download. And they update it every month. It's really great. So this is the job losses between the Great Depression, Great Recession and, and COVID, as well as what ha has happened since then. OK, and this is actually Joe for you and everybody else. You can do it for the whole country or you can do it by the state, or you can do it by separate industries. They really did a nice job making this interactive. I literally stumbled across it. But this is the whole country. And you can see that we have lost more jobs in this COVID than we did during the Great Recession or the financial crisis. And this is the, the key. Uh, last April, just everything went to heck in a handbasket. But we've made some very, we're on, as long as we got these lines above zero, it's a good day. But this is the sectors that took the biggest beating, all right? And again, this is nationwide. If you look at it state by state, it's not always equal. Like Connecticut, there was a lot more jobs lost in arts, entertainment, and recreation. That was the biggest hitter in Connecticut. But this is the country as a whole. Uh, so you will notice that there is some that, that did relatively open, didn't do as bad, primarily the federal government and finance and insurance. One of the curious things, and I love, I, I really like this diagram, is it shows you the connection between the jobs lost and the wages earned. And you'll see that the people placed at the largest number of jobs were lost is in a relatively low income sector. And that makes sense if you know anything about accommodations and food service. All right, so that sort of gives you how this was a very unequal uh, chaos. And that's not anything you guys don't know. And one of the pieces that I don't know what to do with, but I'm putting it on the table, is this is this pandemic, this recession, has had a very different impact on gender. Uh, the participation rate on the part of men and women both dropped, but we are seeing a slower rebound in the participation rate on the part of women. And, and that is a serious ongoing concern. And as anybody above the age of probably 20 knows, a lot of this has to do with childcare. And there's a lot going on there. And that's a whole bunch of issues. Now, I've got a whole bunch of detailed stuff that if you don't have a life, you can probably read, uh, like all of the different things that have been done to enact. And if you really need to get out more often, God bless you. Uh, John, just take him to uh, take him to the Gaelic American Club. They'd be better off. All right. And then this is now this is where I go back and bother Joe. So, Joe, this is the toolbox. Now, again, you and, and Bo, I should go. I'm sorry, Joe. I shouldn't just pick on you. Hums, are you with us? No, nope. okay. Jack Keneally, we got you. Who did I just hear from? All right, Julian, you with me? 
I sure am. All right, so Julian, let's go. Uh, you know, not just picking on Joe, it's time to pick on some of the uh, other Motley crew. Now, I assume you can explain all of these? Uh, no, no arms and arms. Come on, you know me. I'm going to harass you for that. You know like how it goes. All right? This is the full-blown toolbox that you and I, that, uh, back, that John and I never saw before. All right? This, this is this. If you go start with interest on excess reserves and keep going down, all of that is new either from the Great Recession or because of this chaos. But that's the full toolbox that the Fed took out. I mean, they basically went to Home Depot and said, pour it all in. All right? And we're going to go. All right? They have done everything with the commercial paper market, the dealers. They've tried this whole new game called overnight reverse repos. And as you know, Julian has to try to enforce or try to stop the leaky floor. Right, Murdo? That was a fun response there. All right. See, John, you can stay off the hook. You didn't do this chaos. All right. So clearly the Fed took out everything. And if you really want to get bored, go look at their balance sheet. Now, here's the question for John, because John should know this. Before the Great Recession, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet was under a trillion dollars, correct? Mr. Seberg, I need you to answer. Just shake up and down. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Kathleen should be helping you here, you know? All right, we'll give her grief later. All right. Oh, by the way, you remember, you only pick on people you really like. The others, yeah, hey, you know, what the heck? And I can't get to everybody. Hey, Dave M., are you on the call? Uh, well, we're doing okay. Keneally, are you here yet? Wait a minute. Francesca. Okay, you were dead in the middle. That's where I was going to start till I was told to do otherwise. All right, so I'm going to go back. The Fed's balance sheet before the Great Recession was a trillion dollars, or more or less. Now it's over seven trillion. That's a little bit of an expansion. All right, they've done a little crazy things. Now, here's what I'd like to talk to you. Now, uh, by the way, uh, Pat, if I go beyond quarter of eight, shut me off. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Here's my, my conundrum. Now, most of a lot of you know me, and you know I'm basically crazy. And, 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 and the sign is in my office, welcome to the chaos. The sign is in my house, welcome to the chaos. And, and oh, by the way, for you, John, as you know, uh, and, and some of you don't know, I actually have a new desk. I'm in a new office. I'm in a new SOB, new school of business building. It's beautiful. Only one thing I have to complain about, none of the windows open. The heck, you got a pandemic, you can't open a window. What were they thinking? It's humatically sealed. Are they doing cigars in there, storing them? I don't know. But anyway, you know I'm a chalk guy. I, if I had my choice, I'd be on a chalkboard and I'd be harassing you just like I'm doing right now. Except I'd be up, I'd be walking around, and I'd be checking what you're doing, Murdo. All right? That, that'd be how, that's how I roll. Think about this guy, all right, in Salisbury, Massachusetts, in the place you see me. Oh, by the way. When the pandemic started, uh, we, we decided to rebuild this house so we could make it comfortable to live in. So that was another interesting phenomenon. So I'm in my new office. I'm very happy. It's this, it's basically wonderful. I have uh, computers. I have light. What else do you need? So, but me, Zoom, PowerPoint, the web. Oh, that's clearly where I'm best at, as I am right now. You know, I'm trying to pick out the people I know and harass them. Thank God I had some great students. I mean, they were wonderful, they were patient, and they've been all they've been since last March. They really tolerated me. When we go back to the chaos last year, we're trying to find out what toilet paper was. And I got to watch Max Bourne uh, through a window, you know, outside. It was kind of comical. But we've had a lot of fun. And, and but here's the challenge. This year, uh, now Murdo, just put this in context for you, Julie, and the whole rest of you crew, Shin Keneally, anybody who did the Fed challenge, think about this. One, I am not physically there, okay? Two, Professor Shagmani, who is absolutely brilliant and wonderful, but she's relatively kind and gentle. She's a lot smarter than I am, but she's not going to grab you by the throat, Joe. All right? And go, what the heck is going on? So I'm in Salisbury. She's in Fairfield, and they're meeting once a week. And the rest is on this crazy stuff. But we've got to get a presentation done on video to the Federal Reserve two weeks ahead of time. Okay, on video, on Zoom, what we do, okay? All right? And we got to do the standard drill. Where's the economy? Where's it going? You know, what are the positive and negatives? All that great stuff. And make a recommendation, okay? And then we wait to find out how we did. And on November 9th, we get to 
do a video. And oh, by the way, we had to go to WebEx. Think about that. What a piece of junk. Okay. That's what the Fed uses. That's what the government uses. Pieces of junk. Thank goodness we had a wonderful senior who became a tech guru. He actually contacted WebEx by phone and got to talk to somebody who helped actually fix us so we weren't terrible. I mean, yes, Murdo, it was that good. He got through. I don't know what. I think he was running the beads or something. I think he called in a saint or something to get us there, but it made a world of difference. All right, we actually did okay. Yes, I am timing myself, Murdo. All right, now here's the good news. All right, we got to do this presentation early. We got, actually, we got three economists from the, one from the board, one from New York, and one from Richmond is who they did. Before they did the presentation electronically, shipped the duck, puppy out. It went, it went through the department. You know how many times they did it in front of me. So that's not a newsflash. Uh, I don't think Shadmani, God bless her, uh, was like, you, you, you're not, you, you really get in their face. I said, I, I got to, because as you know, some of you know, no one's going to be worse than me. All right. Because uh, I want you totally prepared. All right. And I'm going to be the Russian judge. And the department jumped in all hands on deck, they they went through it more than four times. I just put four up there because not everybody was there all the time and it was great. And on November 1st, All Saints Day, so obviously we got some divine intervention. Uh, we had more than 20 alums show up on Zoom to go, go harass these kids. It was phenomenal. Great, great time was had by all. We made it to the top 18 in the country. Uh, you know, out of about 70 schools, we made it to the top 18 and we finished third. Uh, in New York, which is phenomenal. We really did really, really well. I'm very, very proud of the team. Now, again, in the middle of this, they got quarantined twice at the beach. Uh, so they can't even leave the beach. All right. So, you know, this was, there was an interesting, interesting time to teach. Um, I, I would say that Professor Shadmati was really the guidance of the, of the team. And I just was quiet in the background. And if any of you believe that, I have some land to sell you 22 miles, 20 miles due east of Newburyport, Massachusetts. Now, where are we? So, Joe, make sure I don't get anything wrong. You're my editor here. Right now, we got a GDP growing at about 6.4%. So I got to tee these guys up for this year, okay? And I got to tee them up that what have we got? Have we got this crazy jump up in economic activity that's going to fizzle out next year? Do I have inflation that's popped up? and going to fizzle out next year? Or do I have a change in the weather? All right. I'm betting, I'm praying that we have a pump up and it fizzles away. But right now we got a very strong GDP in the outlook, and I'll show you some of those from other people. Uh, very strong. Labor market's coming back. We just had the lowest claims data today. Housing market is completely nuts in any urban area in the country. I mean, it's not affecting a lot of the, what I'll be polite, the mid part of the country as much, but it's flying investment in plant and equipment and everything is going through the roof. Uh, and by the way, Jim Mulligan, if you're there, thank you very much for keeping the market doing well. You and Mr. Romano and the rest of the crew that works on Wall Street, I can get it to retire someday. Thank you very much. All right. Anytime. You know, I'm a commodities guy, so we welcome inflation. Thank you, J James. Um, you, you, you're welcome, inflation. It's always nice to know I have someone who's thinking about the greater good. All right, I, I'm very, very good to see you, James. And I'm, I'm thanks for keeping me in line. Uh, Jim is another Fed Reserve, uh, Fed Challenge veteran who I had the misfortune of giving a hard time to. <laughs> But thank you, James. And let's keep those markets going in the right direction. In a lot of commodities, you paint in the next. All right. Consumption spending is growing like, you know, when we used to talk about the pent up demand in class after World War II, nobody knew what it was. We see it now. Okay. It's back. It's back with a vengeance. That inflation numbers, I'm a PCE guy because that's what, what the Fed guys look at. But, you know, any measure, any which way but Sunday will help Mulligan and he can keep uh, commodity prices up. Just keep oil down, please. I still got to drive once in a while. You know, you can have copper go up and all that other stuff. Uh, but, you know, get rid of that. Uh, the financial markets for you, you were there. It's the most depressing market in, in the world. It's, it's just flat as all get out. All right. Here's, here's the set of challenges. We, we think we're on the other side of of COVID-19, please. I hope it's in the back mirror, in the back uh, mirror, but we still have people who aren't getting vaccinated and it's a, I just leave that alone. That's a hot button that will get me in trouble, but I've been there enough, I know. Housing market, 
we know it's a demand and supply. Both of, both sides of this equation are screwed up. Demand is flying out the door. So you bought a house yet, Jim, by the way? You know, making all this money on Wall Street? Or are you still living, you know? Too much inflation. Oh, too much inflation. Okay. <laughs> yeah, given that you can do your job anywhere in the world, you see what the poor people in Maine are complaining about with all of these. I've been in the office since July, Dr. Lane. Oh, my gosh. So you're just having a good life, huh? So did yeah, you that's it. Did you join Ridgewood yet? <laughs> Not yet. We're almost there. Well, I just just giving you a hard time. I, as you know, I got to play there and not almost hit a almost hit a deer. Um, that's how close <laughs> I was to the fairway. Um, but we'll leave that alone. We know we've got some so we've got demand side problems. We've got supply side problems. It, it's just crazy. Uh, the global economy. I'll talk a little bit about that. It's worse than we are. Trade challenges. God knows. Uh, the consumer, but we do have financial fragility. I talked about the student. We can talk about. The auto, the used car market, we can talk about the student loan market, talk about the leverage loan market. There's a lot of places that we've got some potential, as we would say in the vernacular, agita. All right. So let's do the good news, bad news. Let's sort of do the Saturday Night Live version. Corporate earnings, awesome, baby. Keep it going. Job market, it's keep coming back. And as I, you already told you, Jim, you're going to take care of the market for me. All right. Consumer confidence, well, it's down the last one, but it's 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 on the right side. Vaccine, I don't know how any, somebody said, will you get a vaccine? I said, just give it to me. And they said, which one? I don't care, just put it in my arm. But that, that actually led to my wife and I, when we were eligible for it here in Massachusetts, the day that we were eligible, I had two computers going down here. She had one upstairs and nothing was happening. So she picked up the phone, she called the local hospital got through in 10 minutes, had an appointment. That was on a Thursday. We had an appointment Saturday morning. So, you know, you can't beat it with a stick. It was great. We were in and out in less than less than an hour. The Fed has done everything they can. The real question is how long can they keep interest rates down? And since James wants to talk about inflation, you are the ones that are going to cause them to shift it up. And I hopefully they don't do it as at Mach 4 that they sort of do it, you know, but it's a, it's a, it's an interesting question. So, so we'll see the rest of the world. Now, let me say Europe is, eh, you know, what, what the heck can I tell you? The BRICS, Brazil is still a disaster. Uh, Russia, as much as they make all kinds of noise, their economy stinks. India is in chaos. China, well, we'll leave them alone. They're doing relatively well economically, but they got some real internal challenges economically that they're going to have to figure out. And I'm not sure I trust most of the data coming out of there, but that's a long story for another day. The emerging markets, you know, there's some real stuff going on in there. Now, Mr. Mulligan, since you're my inflation guy now, we got this yep. issue of debts and deficit that I have to deal with. Now, I assume that now that you as a a uh, person from the garden state uh, is a firm believer in modern monetary theory. No, sir. And neither am I. <laughs> uh, so just so you know, I haven't changed. But it does raise a lot of issues. Uh, Mr. Morrow, I'm going to I'm going to assume you're not, Dr. Morrow. Thank you. Not Jimmy. at all. Thank, thank not you. at all. Uh, I mean, we may be. I'm, I'm, I'm told we're living it, but I don't buy it. So we'll move right along. Energy prices. That that's that's a wild card. That that's a potential challenge. Now, I don't know whether you uh, have seen this one yet, Joe, so this is probably you're the most, believe it or not, this guy actually was reading the Journal of the American Medical Association, which tells you I Didn't need to I get out more often. And, and this is basically, uh, Cutler is a real big dog in the health economics. Larry Summers, yeah. most of you know, he was the president of Harvard for a while. And, and uh, all right, but may have said some things that were not. Thank you, guys. But... They did this thing on trying to analyze the impact of co the COVID on the United States economy. And it's over $16 trillion. And they break it down into the pieces of not only the value of a life and all of that stuff, but not only a lost GDP, which is over se uh, seven and a half trillion, but also the social costs, trying to put everything on the table. Interesting way to look at it. Uh, and, and so Joey, that might be helpful for you in, in playing school. Uh, I'll be using that next year to talk to the derelicts. Now, Outlook. Now, as many of you know, I am not a guru with Outlook for, forecasting, but I take, uh, I, I look at what the pros from Dover are saying, and uh -huh. I said, are they right or are they crazy? Yeah.
but probably not something I want to throw into. Well, anyway, GDP this year is going to grow about just a shade under 7%. Next year, we're looking at a little under 6 which would be, I mean, by historical standards, holy McGillicuddy. It's crazy. Labor market is going to keep going well. I mean, if you think about where we were when we started, the unemployment rate was at 3.5. So it's, we still had that, which was probably hit by historical standards too low. The housing market isn't going to let up. Uh, we are going to see, and I, Jim, this is what I would say to you, the Fed's going to have to get off the dime next year. And it may not be on the Fed funds target, but we, it will be on the asset portfolio. And that's what we're going to start seeing. Actually, I think it's going to happen by the third quarter. But again, I'm, I'm, some argue I'm a pessimist. Uh, inflation, uh, you know, that's, that's going to be the issue. Uh, based on the Jackson Hole meeting uh, last year, they believed, I believe they went to 2.5 as the new target, which will make you happy in Mr. Commodities. But for the rest of us, you know, the two has probably gone by the wayside. I don't think we're going to see two for a couple of years now. But I hopefully, again, there's nobody on this call who's, who's really seen that number. I, I remember when it was 10. So I hopefully don't ever go back there. The key player in all of this is, is Powell. Uh, Powell has got to figure out, Powell and the Fed, I always give the chairman more, as much credit as possible, but they got to figure out where the neutral rate is uh, and when, when they're going to go there. And, and the guy that's at uh, New York now, Williams, is a big, a big R star guy, as is the guy out at St. Louis and, and the lady that's at San Francisco. So they've got some real good players there. The Fed's going to have to start putting some of its toolbox back and probably hold a yard sale. I hope uh, they not have to use them for a while. Fiscal policy is going to face some real challenges, and that's going to be trying to get this. They're going to probably, and I'm, I'm, this is just me, um, they're going to have to pull something like Ronald Reagan. Slow the rate of government spending and let taxes catch up, because, because this can't happen overnight. It's going to be a long run. Going to have to see what the other central banks do. Uh, financial reform, I don't, I don't, given the politics, and this is not, I'm not a pro at that, most of you know, uh, I'm a little concerned that it is not much is going to happen. Uh, and then that's really because of the dynamics. Now, I got a whole bunch of graphs here to drive most of you crazy. So you can look at where, oh, this comes from uh, advisor perspective. It's a, the only reason I use them is the graphs of free Joe. So that, that's a good reason, okay? A little bit of GDP per capita. This looks like GDP per capita at compound rates, just to drive you crazy. Now, this is the outlook from the Fed of Atlanta. This is their GDP now outlook, and they've got uh, the blue chips forecast in, in the brackets. So there's a pretty wide range for that. And then they've got their what their forecast is saying. So they're looking at GDP big numbers, 10% for the next quarter. So that's sort of where we are. Got a couple slides in here for you guys to look at if you want, and it sort of looks at the sectors that are leading and lagging. Uh, when I, but you know, moving, the labor market has you know participation still still a challenge, and that that's going to be an issue going forward. I know there's some politics involved with the unemployment stuff and and all that, but this this is this is a long term trend that I think we have to deal with, and, and that's clearly a challenge. Uh, energy prices is still there, and I, I, I did flip this one in because I want to look at gas prices and look at oil. I tend to use West Texas Intermediate. I don't know why. That's just the why I don't like Brett, but that's all right. Lumber prices, there's not a news flash for anybody, and that's where we go back to the uh, four L's for Kathleen, which you will never forget now. Uh, needed more numbers. Uh, when in doubt, you can always go to the Fed of Richmond and they give you more numbers than anybody in his right mind needs. You have all your ISM indices and please get a life fill. All right, GDP, there's the summary of the GDP data up to date. Retail sales. I have, I mean, all you have to do is look at that number for April, 51%. I mean, that is just wonderful news, but oh my golly, it's not sustainable. Uh, the equity markets again, Jim, and just so you know, I never forget the VIX, and that's interesting to see that how much the VIX has returned back to normal. I don't know of a VIX in commodity markets, but you'll have to make sure I learn about one, Mr. Mulligan. Option so volatility. There you go. You can find it. Oh, okay. I'll find it. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Mulligan. I, I can always rely on somebody from the garden state. All right. Uh, and then you got inflation every which way but Sunday. I don't know. Okay. And then... The Fed's been all in. They've basically emptied their toolbox out. 
And there's their balance sheet. Uh, they kind of blew it up. Uh, so if you look, what I talked about before, before 208, it was below a trillion, and now uh, it's well over five. And then, you know, here's he he what we should have seen coming. And this is sort of to go back to Mr. Seberg. So, John, we know that in the last 10 times that the yield curve has gone negative or had a recession relatively shortly thereafter. And, and so when it dipped down, uh, you know, before the pandemic, everybody said, oh, don't worry about it, Phil, it'll be fine. And they were right. There was no financial reason for it to happen. But then we got a pandemic. So, you know, just in case you were sure about, weren't sure about the batting average, Phil, it came back to verify for you. So Fred Mishkin and Arturo Lasaka are happy that their paper still holds true. Again, more numbers to drive you nuts. So this tells you how much was spent to try to fight COVID. Uh, this comes from the Peterson uh, Institute in DC, probably a place that Tom knows. Uh, this is the challenge, and this is why we have a uh, conundrum. Budget deficit uh, is gonna be continuing, uh, and, and it's not just COVID. COVID's the red stuff. The, the green is the extended tax cut, and the blue is, some people not doing math, okay? And that's, I think, what I told you in class, uh, that some people have a challenge doing mathematics. Uh, and you would argue, no, Lane, is they don't know how to do arithmetic, but that's okay. Uh, so clearly, he's just giving you an estimate of going forward for the 2020 budget. Uh, you know, again, look at what it stacks up to relative to the ones that preceded it. Kind of raises some real questions. And, you know, when in doubt, take out another picture so Jim Mulligan has a lot to see and Joe has stuff for class. Uh, I gave you a relatively long uh, group of people that I have, have begged, borrowed, and used stuff from. I will tell you that, that this is not an ad for Wells Fargo, please. But they give their economic stuff away. And, and so that's one reason to use it, as does PNC. Uh, one of the things that most of the Fed challenge guys and gals know is you go get the free stuff because the, the other stuff gets really expensive really fast. Just in case no one could read, I wanted to make sure I had a slide up to get your attention. This is from the IMF that tells you everything that's been done in monetary and fiscal policy in the United States during the pandemic. So if you really don't have a life mulligan and you need to work on your, your short game, you can read that. And then when in doubt, you have more stuff. All right, Pat, right on time, time for questions. All right, I hope that was at least entertaining, if not informative. It, I always, it always is, Phil, it always is. But I do, there are a couple of questions in the chat, so. Oh my goodness, there are people. Can I fire away? You can do whatever you want within reason. By right. the way, you don't say fire away to somebody from Lawrence. That's not a good idea, <laughs> all right? Uh, all right. I'm the son of a firefighter. So from uh, Shannon, does the Fed make an IOER RRP adjustment next week? If the Fed give makes the money any, funds what, yeah, do we I give the money think. funds what they're looking for? If you, th I, 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 I think they're going to have to do something because the, the liquid, the the slip, slippery floor of the non non bank players in the Fed funds market is really causing a challenge. That leaky floor is a problem, and I wouldn't be shocked, Shannon, if they crank it up by twenty five basis points. I would not. You be think shocked. if they take it that much? Well. No. I, Part of it is to, because of Jim, they got to do something about inflation. They got to they got to send a signal that they they're not ignoring it. Now, I granted, is this because of the bounce back in aggregate demand? There's no debate about that. And as we got all the, you know, I haven't talked about all the supply channel issues with the chips and everything else and lumber. I mean, there's a the supply side is a disaster in terms of efficiency right now because it, nobody had the inventory. I mean, you, you know, you went through this pandemic. And, and we learned quickly that there were certain things that weren't being demanded and weren't being bought, and then all of a sudden you need them. I'd, I would not be shocked if they do something. Now, I always, the reason I said 25, Shannon, is that has been the rules for the last 30 years, is you do things in 25 basis increments. Now, granted that you were in a one-time, please, Lord, one-time event, uh, they may change the rules. And if, they, and if that they did that and the market's, don't like it. You know what my response is? They're trying to do the best they can. Uh, I would. I do think they're going to have to do something, but they're going to have to be. This is going to sound crazy. They don't have time to do the forward guidance they need to do. 
to get the market mm. to basically say to the market, we're coming back uh, and, and we're not sure how much. And I, I think they've got to do at least 10. I, I'm again, I'm doing the 25 because that's mm -hmm. what's been done for the last 30 years. Now mm -hmm. it's history. Yeah. Just so you know, we think we think RRP is going to hit probably close to a trillion by September. We're we'll we cross five hundred billion today. today. We're going to cross today. We cross five hundred uh, at an all time high. B of A is calling for getting up to a trillion seven fifty from uh, J P Morgan and C S F B is eight fifty. Wow. Utilization of the RRP. Which basically was a non-player five years ago. It's pay zero. It pay zero. <laughs> That's what our money's worth. Paying zero. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Shannon. Good to see you, by the way. I have a two-part question here, Phil, from Clara. Two parts. One, two parts. One to you and one to Jim. So oh, good. On, good. Jim. I'm glad Mulligan's put on the <laughs> sauce. So first to you, do you see a potential recession given the inflation and potential impending budget deficit coming from the unbridled uh, spending? What about a depression? Okay. First. First of all, if I use the D word, somebody would hit me in the back of the head. <laughs> right? yeah. That's the first thing. Right. And his name would be Ed Deek, by the way. <laughs> uh, the, the second is, given how much pent up demand there is, how much saving there is, and given that unless something funky happens in either health or energy, again, the, the, again, the one end out is economists make assumptions for reasons because when you subdivide the word, you figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. But there is nothing right now that I have seen or read that would indicate that we are looking for a double dip. It, um, something that is off the Richter scale would have to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I take depression. I mean, what we just went through is the closest thing you and I are going to see to a depression. Okay. You know, I mean, they, they don't use that word anymore. But if you look at the size of the drop in economic activity mm -hmm. and the size of the rise in unemployment, yes, for me and most of my family, we, were, we did not feel the economic impacts. But I know a whole lot of people that did. Uh, and, and so that's why... I think the comeback, uh, and I'm hoping the comeback, I'm going to use the, probably use the wrong word, what a surprise, is going to be calm towards the end of the year. And I'm not saying negative, I'm just saying sort of we take a breath and stop going. I, I think the sum is going to be nuts. I mean, I would not want to be anywhere near a resort area because it's going to be completely nuts. Everybody wants to get out. I mean, I don't blame them. I mean, I, you know. I, I haven't been in a restaurant since last since March before that. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, everything's takeout. All right? And I didn't. And, and, and the way some of these guys and gals pivoted to do takeout is amazing. I do not see a rebound into a recession. I, I do not see a, a double dip. I, I, doesn't mean I could be wrong. I've been wrong more than I want to admit. But I don't see a double dipper. Mm -hmm. What do you got for James? Well, uh, for Jim, um, I too am from the Garden State, Jim. So nice to meet you. Um, so please clarify why inflation is good for commodities. Wouldn't the farmers be able to overcome the extra costs of fuel and supplies with commodities prices being so high? He's a trader. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just uh, there's usually this inverse relationship, right, Dr. Lane, of, uh, you know, increased inflation, uh, increased prices in, in real goods. And that's, I mean, if you look at your input costs, whether it be crude oil or soybeans, that's uh, that's sort of what drives increased prices. So that's a little bit circular. But uh, as a, as a commodity salesperson, uh, you know you get more interested in the market uh, when prices rise, and and that's we've been looking for this for about ten years <laughs> now, and we finally got it. And um, a lot of people are interested in it, and uh, we're in the news all the time. But uh, yeah, that, that's that's kind of it. Input costs, right, Dr. Lane? Yep, it's all about input costs. You're right, Jim. All right, well, thank you. Um, there's another question from Dale. Back to you, Dr. Lane. Will inflation go down after businesses make up for last year's losses? Well, I, I'd start with the first thing, is they're never gonna make up for last year's losses. Mm -hmm. And if they're trying to do it in a year, they're gonna pay the price. Uh, then I bring that up because there's a couple of places up here that significantly jacked up their prices for the summer. Mm -hmm. And people are going other places. What a novel thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jim, to put it in context, one of the golf courses doubled their rates for the summer. 
and you know they're not the only game in town. Mm. Uh, so people are going other places. I do think that that some of them are trying going to try to get back a little, and I don't blame them. I mean they got they got beat up pretty bad, particularly in the service sector. And, and then I think that, but I think you, my hope is, and again, I've got to have oil prices stabilize. Mm-hmm. We are going to see some, put, I mean, wages is a challenge right now. And that's, go back to the old days, that's cost push inflation. Mm-hmm. And, and that is a concern because as many of you now know, trying to find people right now is a challenge mm-hmm. and it's a real issue. And so that's, that's, that could be, we could get some wage push inflation, which could have some impact into next year. I do know that you know, the, the labor market is very tight right now, and but we still have a we still have room to go. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's five eight now, but it's and it, there's some as I brought up the one about women. We also have we have some issues with teenagers and others. So there's some structural I, I'd call them structural, mm-hmm. not necessarily business cycle issues going on uh, that, that are raised some issues. It's like how many how many people do you know who uh, go to Fairfield University who actually <clears throat> do manual labor in the summer, all right? I don't think I see too many of them no. building stone walls or uh, taking down trees or uh, unloading trucks, what I did in college, mm-hmm. um, leave that alone. All right, Thank so you. Um, another question from Joe, how confident are you in the current Fed's ability to combat inflation if it arises? People like Yellen are pretty confident, whereas Summers has been pretty pe- pessimistic. All right. So uh, let me answer that as directly as I can, Joe. There's two people that I think have the, their finger on this one besides Powell. Uh, one of them is Lael Brainerd, and uh, that is one very, very smart person. The other one, as much as sometimes I don't agree with him, is Jim Bullard uh, from St. Louis. He's a hawk. He's a, he's a hawk. And, and you've got to, f- most, more of the presidents are hawks than doves. The board is very dovish, but I think you've got you got a few people there, and there's still this interesting guy out at Stanford, John Taylor, uh, and he is not quiet. And, and, and you know, John John is one of those classic guys that I I may not agree with his heart, head, but I never disagree with his heart. He's he's in it for the right reason. It isn't about him. Uh, Larry Summers, uh, I will just. Just say Larry Summers. That's all I have to say about that. I, I do think, remember, Yellen is probably one of the smartest people who's ever been the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, probably the best is the guy that has the honorary degree from Fairfield, but we'll leave that alone. And you know who that is, Joe. Paul Anthony Volker. Uh-huh. Yeah. Next okay. question. Okay, from Dolores. Do we think that even if consumer demand drops in the U.S. and shipping issues return to a pre-pandemic level, that a lagged foreign GDP will continue to cause inflation and lengthen the recovery? Whoa. Okay. <laughs> you just got me. i am just got about six graphs going right now. <laughs> uh, the answer to the question is yes. She's right on target because there's a lot of dynamics there. Mm-hmm. That whole shipping supply chain thing, that's a, I mean, when you can't even find a container to put stuff in, this tells you something's wrong. Mm-hmm. You can't even buy them, you can't, then nobody's making enough. But what's going on in the rest of the world? You know, 20 years ago, we didn't worry too much about the ROW. Now we worry a whole lot more about it, not only because of what we sell to them, but what we buy from them. And we can see that's what's happening in lumber because most of our lumber is being milled in, China, in Canada. Yeah. So there's a whole lot of dynamics going on. This could definitely slow the recovery next year. Actually, I wouldn't say slow the recovery as not get as much growth next year. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, I do believe, I think, if you look at the long-term numbers, we're probably going to convert back to something about somewhere between 25 and 3% of the long-term trend, which is where we should be anyway. Mm-hmm. Sort of where we are. Okay. Um, from Thanks. Julian, yep. From Julian, would love to hear your thoughts on Bitcoin and its role as a digital currency. <laughs> so, Julian, a couple of years ago, uh, Pat's office had me do a panel in New York. Yeah, it was me. 
Bitcoin expert for the Wall Street Journal. He is he's a Fairfield alum, mm -hmm. English major by training, and he's the nobody at the Wall Street Journal wanted to take up Bitcoin about a decade ago, and he he decided. You know, what the heck? What do I got to lose? It's, it's a good, it was a free lunch. So he went and he learned about it. He's written, I think, two books on it so far. I think so. And so he did this talk and he, guys, guy was awesome. Absolute awesome speaker. Really funny, really engaging. And so we finish and he says, yeah, you know, we finish and they take the mics off. And he goes, okay, you didn't ask me any questions. Said, no, no, no. Said, do you have any questions of me? I said, easy. Yeah. How much Bitcoin do you own? He goes, not a dime. Ponzi <laughs> scheme. I said, okay, I'm done. <laughs> now, Julian, some people have made a lot of money in this. Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a casino. Mm. Uh, we have one country, I just went out of my brain, which it is just to say it's going to accept uh, Bitcoin yes. as a medium of exchange. Yeah. Salvador. That's, That's right. it. <laughs> now, now, a very stable nation. Yeah. Stuff. Um, now, the question, Julian, is always one in doubt, answer a question with a question. How do you have a media of exchange that's price value changes every day or actually changes every minute? Mm -hmm. How do you write contracts? Uh, I mean, I, I thought it was a good way to hide illegal money, but obviously they figured out how to break into that uh, courtesy of a, a little ransomware. So other than, you know, illegal activities, I do think it, it brings up a different or an alternative investment strategy. The other one I would think about is, God rest his soul, Bernie Madoff had an alternative strategy too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, 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 it's, I think it's the, the, no offense, Julian, you're young, you're under the age of definitely 30. So you could, your, your beta may be a little bit different than mine. Uh, so I, I'm not going to be investing in, I'm not going to be investing in Bitcoin. I will tell you, Julian, though, you're right to raise it because the central banks, not only the Fed, but all of the Federal Reserve banks have been charged with looking at it. The major uh, G7, G10, whatever you want to do, and have been charged with figuring it out. What, to, what do we do with this crazy stuff? Yeah. Uh, I would say it's an interesting experiment and then say, have a nice day. When in doubt, go back and read about the Wildcat banking era in the United States. And that's what it reminds me of. But, you know, again, maybe I'm just pessimistic. I, I'd leave it to the younger scholars to do that. So you're up, Dr. Morrow. <clears throat> I have two more questions, Bill. Thank you. Uh, this one from Clara. When do you sense we'll see improvement in the semiconductor industry to relieve the supply constraint? Well, first of all, let me go to the commodity guy uh, <laughs> so he can help. Really? Because, I mean, if you think about where the where semiconductors are made, that's where you got to stop. Because uh, there, there are grades. As I, again, this is me. I'm not an expert on this by any stretch of anybody's imagination. But I was always told that there were at least four different places that you've got semiconductors from. And only the high-end ones came out of the United States because those were designed for the supercomputers. They weren't uh, meant for the regular stuff like my phone or my computers uh, or anything else like my car. But that clearly there's been a, the, the demand is now, the demand is already huge. And the pandemic killed the labor force and killed the commodities. One of the issues for my commodity guy is going to be how, how copper is going to screw this up because most of those chips have a copper component. And I don't believe the price of copper has been going down. It is not. It is and not. you know the average time to get a copper mine online? I have no clue. Seven years. Oh, great. Now, how long does it take to get a lithium mine online? Probably longer. Oh, I don't and know. You know. That's how, why I'm asking. Because if we're going to go you know how much? Do you know how much more copper a electric vehicle uses compared to an internal combustion vehicle? I'm afraid to ask. Five times. Well, that's why Tesla's um, so high priced, I guess, huh? So that, yeah, so that, 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 that's my answer to the question. The best I can do, it's really above my pay grade. All right. And the final question is from Stephanie. I see Stephanie here. I How see her self. I see her. <laughs> How are the socks gonna do this season? <laughs> Now we're dealing with the important things. And as Shannon has already indicated, they are going to do wicked awesome. Uh, I just want them to be competitive and be at least, a no offense, Jane, uh, above the evil empire. 
<laughs> That's my team too, Jim. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just letting you know, you know, I, it's going to be, it'll be interesting. There'll actually be people in Fenway. Yes, I know. Um, That's exciting. That is exciting. A little exciting. different. Uh, a yeah. little different world. Yeah. So. Yeah, it should be interesting. Well, sir, well, thank you. Thank you very much. And this well, um, comes from the heart, my friend. Well, um, first of all, with I you, need, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, working with you is always a I joy. Need to, I need to thank the people who are here who okay. are time to, to listen to this crazy guy. <laughs> Most of you, uh, many of you I had in class, and I still think fondly of the chaos we had, and, and I just want you to all be safe. And, and don't be shocked if some of you here get an email from me in October uh, asking for your presence to help the Fed Challenge team this year, because apparently we're doing it virtually again. Oh, and by the way, Shad Mani is on maternity leave because she had twins <laughs> uh, the uh, mid-April. So guess who's running the Fed Challenge? Yeah. Those well, good, good. I'm sure um, you have a following, my friend. You have, you have a following. So, um, as I said, working with you is always such a joy. I said this to you um, last time we spoke. I leave these events with a big smile on my face. So, well, thank, thank you. you. I, I always learn so much. I will say to you, I wish I had had you as a professor. That would have been a lot of fun. <laughs>